on the beat. What's good, everyone? It's your boy Nazi with another video for the channel. Welcome back to DMV Sports Zone. And today, I'll finally be diving into the 2020 FedEx Field Washington football team practice that was held earlier today it's pretty exciting news around that but before diving into that i first want to dive into the the sad sad news that broke earlier today around the passing of all-time great coach john thompson jr and you know it's been a sad last few weeks and months as we've seen the passing of so many legends and icons in sports entertainment or otherwise and coach john thompson jr's passing definitely falls into that category his passing is one that has had far-reaching impact across the united states and especially here in D.C., obviously, where he coached Georgetown University, the men's basketball team, for 27 great seasons. His impacts can't really be quantified. He was definitely a great coach, but he was more than a great coach. He was a great mentor for many young men, many young black men in, in D.C. And, you know, a fact that has been thrown around recently on the news and stuff is is that his players, 97% of his players graduated college. And, I mean, that... That statistic is unheard of back then, but especially now, of course, right, with so many one and done players who pretty much jump to the NBA after one year, or maybe even two years at the latest. So definitely great there. And he's also an activist of sorts. He he definitely stood up for his players at all costs um, in the 70s and 80s when it wasn't really popular to do so. And, and he fought for his predominantly black players in a time where they weren't as welcome as they are now. So he mentored some of the all time greats in both college basketball and NBA history, of course, right with Patrick Ewing, who he won a championship with in 1984. He also coached Alonzo Mourning, Dikembe Mutombo, and of course, Allen Iverson, fellow DMV native. So I, of course, didn't get to see much of John Thompson Jr.'s coaching here in DC for my favorite college basketball team. I unfortunately didn't get to see much of it, but I saw mostly his his son sort of taking the helm here in Georgetown. But I did do a lot of research growing up, and I even did a school project on both John Thompson Jr. and the general Georgetown men's basketball program. So I definitely learned a lot more about him and his impact that has been far-reaching across the DMV area. So I definitely gained a profound respect for him over the years. And Big John, as we so affectionately call him, started off his career winning two championships in the NBA for the Boston Celtics, alongside another great in Bill Russell. Shortly after that, he sort of carried those that winning way into uh, D.C., where he coached the Georgetown men's basketball team, starting off in the 1970s when Georgetown really wasn't on the map for anything but academics, but he really put it on the map for its athletic programs, and particularly, of course, its its men's basketball program. And it was also a time when a lot of players in Georgetown, and Georgetown as itself was predominantly white and didn't really welcome too many black players and stuff. So he really reached out to the D.C. area, where, of course, we have a lot of black players, and elsewhere to, to sort of integrate his team and make it more diverse and more inclusive. Again, that sort of ties into his strong legacy that he has. And then over his 27 years, when we're talking about accomplishments, right, he made the Final Four three times. He won the national championship in 1984, of course, with Patrick Ewing being a star player. And winning that championship, he was the first black coach in Division One sports history, right? Not just men's basketball, any one of the Division One sports to win a national championship. So he is a trailblazer in that aspect. And really, once again, ties into his greater legacy here in D.C. So with all of Coach Thompson's accomplishments and the fact that he was such a strong leader of men at Georgetown, one could make the argument, much like sports columnist Clinton Yates did earlier today, that he is and will always be the greatest black man and one of the greatest coaches in D.C. sports history. He, his legacy just holds that much weight here in this area. So with all that, I, as I know many of y'all have 
have over the course of the day. Send my condolences to Coach John Thompson, his his family, and also the Georgetown family at this very difficult time. And hopefully the Georgetown men's basketball program can hold on to his legacy and sort of get back on their feet in terms of finding that that winning attitude, winning mentality that we had in the 80s and 90s. So now on to the review of the Washington football practice that took place earlier today at FedEx Field. I want to first start off by going over the injury news as I dive into all my notes in a sort of reporting fashion. So with the injury news, Kendall Fuller was out once again. And as JP Finley of NBC Sports Washington discussed earlier today in a Twitter post, at what point can we become concerned about Kendall Fuller? Because he's missed a series of practices up until this point, And he is such a pivotal part on that defense. We gave him a huge contract in the offseason. So I am definitely worried there. And then on the other hand, we also have Jonathan Allen, who missed practice, but mostly for precautionary reasons. If it was a game, we would probably played in it. And he was seen on the sidelines walking in a leg sleeve, but by all accounts, he should be ready by week one. And I'm excited because that Eagles offensive line, which I'll discuss later, is sort of ravished with injuries. And I think he'll really feast come week one. Antonio Gaining Golden missed practice as well with an undisclosed injury. And he too has missed several practices up until this point, particularly over the last weekend. So Inman, who I project to be the week one starter and I've projected since he really signed with the team, has gotten most of the reps alongside Terry McLaurin and Steven Sims in that wide receiver group. So looking forward to see more out of Inman as the weeks and season progresses and AGG hopefully comes back healthy and sort of takes a hold of that wide receiver two spot sooner rather than later. And then Sadiq Charles is still recovering from that calf injury and he missed another practice as expected. So we'll see how it goes there. So far it has been Jerome Christian has played mostly with the ones as of now. So. I don't know, Jerron Christian, obviously over the last couple of years, he hasn't played too well, but I've heard from several accounts that he's improved to the point where he could be a legit starting left tackle for us. So fingers crossed there, but who knows? And then I wanna get through some new FedEx field tidbits that I've seen through different reporting today and also in past days. The field does look newer. I don't think they changed the, the field itself. I just think they sort of enhanced the grass a little bit and didn't really install any turf or anything, but it helps, you know, ha not having any games, any concerts being in the stadium so that the fields could look nice and clean come, come week one. There's also no logo in the middle of the field, which makes sense, right? Because we're sort of rebranding, changing up everything, and we're no, no longer the Redskins, we are the Washington football team. And then lastly, the nameplates. And this was some solid reporting by Pete Haley and other um, individuals as well. The nameplates in the Ring of Fame have been covered in the stadium. So you know how we usually see the Redskins logo with the player and the Ring of Fame all across the stadium. They have all been covered and I don't know, how to feel about that i sort of feel like that's a little bit too far and sort of removing ourselves from our long and storied history at the same time i kind of understand it because the organization is going through a full rebrand and if you are going through a full rebrand i guess might as well change everything even though i again don't really know how to feel about that let me know what you guys feel in the comment section below about it though and then with the actual practice review well, as bram weinstein mentioned on the call and you guys should all check out that interview that I had a couple weeks ago. Bram Weinstein is a pretty cool guy and he, he is the new play-by-play -play voice of our Washington football team and he is a DMV native. So he it was a really cool interview and you guys should definitely check that out. But on the call, he said that this practice was really the first time that many of the players stepped onto the FedEx field grass, right? Like whether it be because they're rookies like Chase Young and Antonio Gibson or just veteran players who played elsewhere but are playing with our team this season, like Donald Trump Emin. So yeah, it's definitely it was definitely interesting to see the players, at least through images of the players on the field. And on top of that, it's the first time we're seeing Alex Smith throw a football at FedEx Field since his major gruesome leg injury almost two years ago against the Texans. And it's great, you know, I've mentioned this several times now, but it's great to see where Alex Smith is with his recovery. I don't think he'll be starting right away if actually hopefully but not at all throughout the season because I think Dwayne Askins will be that guy for us but again I'm really happy to see him improve see him progress in his recovery and really reach this point where he could legit start a couple of games for us if Dwayne Haskins goes down god forbid or gets put on the COVID list who knows but great on Alex and then the team did start off in 1v1 drills during the practice so with the practice right it was supposed to be a scrimmage by all accounts from Julie Donaldson and other members of the organization but it ended up just being a practice which kind of sucks but 
we did get to see some highlights, some sort of um, play on the field, which is always great. And the team, once again, did start off in 1v1 drills. And with the 1v1 drills, Haskins did find Sims Jr. several times when the wide receivers were matched up with the cornerbacks. And it's great to see that connection strengthen throughout the offseason, as we saw on Instagram and just feeds everywhere, right? Um, but to see that connection on FedEx field for the first time this season was was really cool today, especially as Sims expects to have a big role in this offense in this new Eric Coriel offense brought over by Scott Turner. And D'Angelo Hall mentioned this on the broadcast, but Bryce Love dropped Reuben Foster. Yes, Reuben Foster to his knees a couple of times when they were doing some 1v1 drills between the running backs and the linebackers. And D'Angelo Hall even compared Bryce Love to Dalvin Cook, which is saying a lot, right? Because Dalvin Cook is a bona fide stud in this league at this point. He doesn't really have the great elite size, which is sort of comparable to Bryce Love, of course, but like Dalvin Cook, he does offer great potential out of the backfield, great pass catching, great running between tackles. So who knows, Bryce Love could be that sort of player, but right now we just need to see him on the field for the first time, of course, after missing substantial time after being drafted in the fourth round in the 2019 NFL draft. And then Antonio Gibson did take a couple of deep passes down the sideline for touchdowns. That was great to see because as I mentioned in several videos now, I do see Antonio Gibson having a huge, huge role in our offense this year. And fantasy players, keep in mind that he should be a late round pickup if you didn't already pick up already in, in the draft so far. And I see Gibson as being an Alvin Kamara type, so it's great to see him doing well in this practice and in training camp as a whole. Flecky Hudson broke up a nice pass to Adrian Peterson out of the backfield, which is great to see out of the fifth round rookie. AD, Adrian Peterson beat out Sean Dion Hamilton for some nice receptions as well, which might be a little bit surprising to people because a lot of people automatically think that with guys like JD McKissick, Bryce Love, and Antonio Gibson, AD's catches out of the backfield won't be there anymore. And I think he will still have a role in that aspect in the offense, just because if you are running back in the Air Coriel offense brought over by Scott Turner, you have to be able to catch the ball. So I see him as having that role and he showed that today during the practice. And Jimmy Moreland, despite having an outstanding camp, did get beat a couple of times in 1v1 drills, which is all right, right? Because wide receivers, 1v1 drills are sort of catered to wide receivers in today's NFL. And if you are a wide receiver and you don't beat a cornerback who is not maybe a top five cornerback, then that's sort of a downer on the wide receiver itself. So, I mean, it was, it was as expected and not really surprised. He still has had a great camp though. And then the team ran 11 on 11 drills. And first we saw a series of red zone plays in the practice. And we saw those with all three units of the team, first string players, backup players, and third string players. And on offense with the starters, Dwayne Haskins, of course, was taking all the ones, which we've talked about throughout the off season as him doing so. Jerome Christian and Wes Martin were getting most of the reps at the ones at this point at the left tackle and left guard position. And I really feel at this point that they should be the projected left tackle and left guard come week one, just because they're pretty much getting all the reps in camp and in the practice today. As discussed earlier, Terry McLaurin, Steven Sims, and Dontrell Inman were taking all the reps at the ones today. And I see them all as having huge roles in our offense this year. Hopefully AGG gets sort of circulated into that position, into that big role that we hope to see out of them this year. But come week one, I think those three players will have big roles. And Adrian Peterson first had a nice touchdown off the gut. Pretty typical, great stuff out of the ageless wonder um, in Adrian Peterson. Dwayne did find Terry wide open for a touchdown on one play. And possibly that happened because of miscommunication in the secondary, but also possibly that happened because Terry McLaurin is just that great at creating separation. And, really beating the dbs and stuff so yeah it was it was a great play all around Dwayne also kept targeting marcus ball which is an interesting story out of camp this year in the end zone and was somewhat successful in some plays but also the ball did get tipped once and the dbs got to celebrate on that drill there was also one play with Dwayne where the team was running the read option right and Dwayne Haskins, he did not hand it off to Adrian Peterson he kept it himself and tucked it Adrian Peterson had a huge hole to run through so Again, Dwayne Haskins is learning. He is just going into his second year after not really playing much last year as a whole. So he will learn those things and he will get better at it as the season progresses. And then on defense, <laughs> Chase Young, the number two overall pick, blew up several, several plays, getting past that beleaguered offensive line and having several would-be sacks. On one play, he even almost sacked Dwayne Haskins, but Haskins found that sliver of space to, to throw the ball to Terry, I believe. And, Asking shortly after that, even patted Chase Young on the back and 
said good job rookie um after he made that great play and this is really enticing to see especially because come week one we are playing against the eagles which as i mentioned earlier their offensive line is totally demolished at this point at, at least on the left side with andre dillard and brandon brooks no longer playing at least for several games this year so I think Chase Young and that defensive line, that stout defensive line that should carry us to some wins this year, will actually feast come week one and beat the Eagles offensive line a couple of times. I really do believe that. And Troy Apke was taking great angles on several balls thrown by Haskins. He He's really come around as that raw, but super athletic fourth round pick that we got a couple years back. So that's great to see there. And then Ronald Darby was playing lockdown man coverage as well, which is great to see in that cornerback group that has suffered over the last couple of years. But may may steadily but surely improve this season and then with the backups kyle allen was taking all the reps as the backup quarterback cam sims recovered from a couple of almost drops to make some really nice catches down the field kyle allen did have a pass that was picked off by rookie seventh rounder cameron curl who has had a great camp up until this point and has had three interceptions in just the last few weeks. And then lastly, McKissick got a couple of handoffs out of the backfield too for some chunk yardage. And will be exciting to see, right? Because I project him and I know a lot of people project him to be the starting third down back on the season. And he definitely has all the ability, right? He has the pass catching ability, has the ability to run between the tackles, much like Tony Gibson and Bryce Love. So, but he also has a veteran leadership, veteran presence as well um, going for him. So it's gonna be exciting to see come week one against the Eagles. And then the third string guys, Steven Montez took most of the reps as a third team quarterback. He largely handed off the ball to Bryce Love at the beginning, who pulled off some solid chunk plays as he's usually had over the last couple of weeks in training camp. And then Montez shortly after a couple of handoffs did make a nice throw to a roster bubble guy in gesture way as well. And then lastly, there was a series of first and second down drills with all three units on the team. With the starters, Adrian Peterson, of course, came out with the ones along with Dwayne Haskins and, wait for it, Antonio Gibson, which might be an interesting wrinkle, right, on our offense that we have yet to see, but might see as the season goes along this year. Antonio Gibson, like I said earlier, guys, like he offers such great potential and he does provide you that Alvin Kamara type ability that will be exciting to see in this enticing Air Coriel offense. And Askins did have a great throw and catch with Steven Sims on the field off the play action, which was pretty impressive to see by all accounts. And then with the backups, Kyle Allen threw a great, great deep ball down the field to Cam Sims in front of two defenders and Greg Stroman and Jacob Everett. And with Cam Sims, though, we often see these plays in camp, right? In practices, but we never really get to see these plays in games, even with the fact that we've had a depleted wide receiver core over the last couple of years. And Cam Sims has had an abundance of opportunities, but has never really produced on them. So. This year will be all about Cam Sims actually producing on the field come regular season time and really taking a hold of one of those backup wide receiver spots that have not really been determined as of yet. And then Kyle Allen did have a fake handoff to Peyton Barber that turned into a completion to Jester away once again. And finally, Kyle Allen handed off to Barber who looked for some running room but was almost immediately stopped by Ruben Foster. And that isn't really surprising. One, because Ruben Foster is such a great linebacker and I'm excited to see what he brings to this defense once and for all this year. But also because Peyton Barber isn't necessarily that great at reading through the holes and getting all that yardage that we need out of the running back room. Well, found backup tight end Marcus Ball a lot, much like Dwayne Haskins on a couple of nice completions. Baugh does seem now to have a much higher chance of making the roster than he had before camp even started, right? Like I honestly thought that he was gonna be a fringe roster guy or the outright cut come regular season time, but he's really showing a lot and we don't really have much proven production on the tight end group. So I think Logan Thomas will start as the tight end one, but Marcus Baugh has been showing a lot over the last couple of weeks. And Steven Montez also threw to McKissick on one rep out of the backfield, but the pass was immediately broken up by the defense. And some other notes on the practice today and training camp as a whole that I wanted to deliver to you guys. Alex Smith did not get any 11 on 11 reps until the very end of practice today. So as I've been saying over the last couple of weeks, he is pretty much a backup at this point at most, right? Like I think out of anybody, Kyle Allen should be worried about his his role with this team with Alex Smith coming back and really making a full recovery as of yet. So Dwayne Haskins, I think is his job solidified at least for this season to really show us if he's gonna be that franchise quarterback for us. And then DMV native Ronald Darby, kind of touched on this earlier, but he's had an outstanding camp and 
we might really see a resurgence out of him, right? The last couple years, he's dealt with injuries while playing for the Eagles, but you only have to go a couple years back to see him play at a nearly Pro Bowl level, right? For the Eagles on that championship run in 2017. So hopefully with the fact that he's playing at home and the fact that the defense is going to be, or at least we hope, is going to be super solid this year. Hopefully Ronald Darby continues what we've seen in camp and what we've seen in practices to the regular season and, and does really well for us this year. And then Fabian Moreau and Jimmy Morlin have both grown into their roles on the outside and in the slot. I do think those two guys will be interchangeable in our cornerback room this year, especially with Kendall Fuller. Who knows how long he'll be out for um, in terms of the regular season. And I do see a jump in play coming out of both of them this season, especially Fabian Moreau, who I think has all the potential in the world, has blazing speed, great height, great, great weight, everything, right? But he was stuck in the slot for, for most of the last couple of years. But once he got on the outside, he did start to play well and was really a solid asset for us towards the end of last season. So looking forward to him doing well in Jimmy Moreland, People's Corner, of course, who Landon Collins is especially high on making an incredible jump this year. And lastly, even after bringing Sean Davis in in the offseason, right, as one of those few free agent pickups that we had, Troy Apke has gotten the most of his new opportunity this year at the free safety position. He has been a guy who, coming into the NFL, has had all the athletic ability, right? The blazing speed, the size, everything, but he hasn't been really able to put it all together mentally and it looks like he has this this offseason and i'm excited to see what he has as the projected free safety come week one alongside landon collins and hopefully he becomes that hidden gem that we hoped we found in the fourth round a couple years back and then lastly my final thoughts on everything right the state of the washington football team at this point after a successful training camp it has been an atypical camp this year obviously with the whole virus running rampant across the united states but it was still a great camp even though we didn't really get to see it in person like i finally got to see it for the first time last year and i'm excited to see what all the young guys have and you know a few of the wally veterans as well and what they will bring this year for washington football team um, come regular season time and then lastly i'm really looking forward to steady improvement from the team i won't give you my season win loss prediction right now but i will hopefully in a video coming next week. But I really see some steady improvement out of the team, especially with a guy like Juan Rivera being at the helm and prayers still to him as he's dealing with his um, uh, cancer recovery right now. But I really think the team is trending towards the right direction, has all the young talent for the first time in a long time, if not all my like years on this planet, honestly, like they have all that young talent, but it's all about putting it all together and stringing together some wins as the season progresses that's all i got for this video guys it was pretty long but i wanted to cover all the bases and everything washington football training camp and fedex field practice that went on earlier today so thank you all so much for watching please 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 make sure to like comment subscribe to the channel greatly appreciate it y'all and hopefully we we see that progression on the team this year and have a great season have a great rest of your weekend man football is coming it's time guys it's time